So welcome to the pilot, the first episode zero of Elemental Survival. So you're walking and you don't want to go too far from where you've become disorientated and lost. So you're scanning around and you're trying to find resources and a place to shelter that's safe from the elements, safe from water that has that has everything that you need to help you survive at least through the first night. Um, you're resigned at this point to the fact that you're not going to self-rescue and that you're going to stay in place and so you're trying not to go too far off because you don't want to wander too far. People might have a chance of finding you if you stay where you are. A moving target is the hardest thing to find. So as you're walking, you're scanning. Here we see we have pine cones, pine, we're in pine country. All tall trees, we're also in a, a fire zone because we're in Northern California. So you usually are these days, but we know the pine trees will give us sap. We know we're in a pretty dry period of time right now, but it's also getting really cold at night. And there's wild animals in this area. I guarantee it, there's pumas and black bears. I've seen them both. And so uh, we need to find a little shelter that is just right, that's going to keep us safe, keep us warm. And as usual, in a lot of spots, it's actually really hard to find a flat spot in nature. You're either up somewhere flat, where you're really exposed, or you are on some sort of contour that's a series of rolls going down to a river or whatever made it. In this situation, I'm thinking, we might use that to our advantage and this kind of goes downhill here again and downhill here and then uphill so we might just use this little top area here where these dead man's Anita are and, uh, and try and forge a little camp there the rest of this looks pretty steep again it's just one general angle so I mean, it's true as a lot of these lower branches for overhead are dead, but they're not exactly widow makers. The upper ones are just barren for the winter, but you can see with buds on them, they're fine. These just got killed off by the fire passing through. And these taller trees here are all alive, and any of their dead branches seem to be pretty broken off already. So I think we're pretty much in the good, and this is just like easy, uh, easy firewood, if anything else. Whereas over here you get into a lot more big standing dead that I don't want to be under even if it rains a little bit or blows. But yeah, big green over here. So I think we're going to stay right where we are. Let's build something. Not a whole lot of uh, fancy to this except for dead man's Anita and a lot of things that grow with an upwards fork like that. You can just snap off with your body weight when they're dead. What you're doing is scrape your ankle on the sharp thing. So make sure you're pulling your punches, meaning putting a little bit of resistance into your pushes and your blows. But you can see how it just tears off and look how beautiful this is. And this stuff is so hot you can melt iron with it. It's a manzanita. But yeah, we're just going through, like if I stomp right here and cut myself, so I'm going a little ways out. You can see it just 
break backwards there. So we have firewood, shelter material. Oh, see the whole thing? Just popping out of here. Yeah. And just lean that over that way for now. So, we have our little camp cleared out, kind of. Now let's do some building. Because we have limited time, because we haven't made corded and we don't have a lot of string or anything, or shoelaces, which I don't want to sacrifice for that, we need to make something that leans on something or leans against itself. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to stick with basically a wooden stick teepee. So it would be a debris shelter that's just triangular, like building a, a teepee fire. And it's just going to lean in on itself. We're going to use these straights, try and make it as big as we can. And yeah, the motion and the, the energy of it leaning in on itself will be what holds it together. And uh, that's the idea. In this series, we'll discuss the benefits of power circles, no matter what your beliefs are, the mental, um, the mental benefits of them, and I like to start every camp with it, and it gives me something in the dark to know that I drew as my boundary, that's going to be where I make my stand, if nothing else. Um, you can also, you know, you can also incorporate your own beliefs into it and make it a much more powerful thing for yourself. And when it comes down to what you fear, it's all about beliefs and what's in your heart and what's in your head anyway. So, so I start with a good strong circle and I go from there. Any material now that I pull out, I want to move towards the front to create a shelf that goes back into the hill. So I'm going to start putting logs and stuff on the front, which will both hold up the front legs and create a spot 
Where as I kick stuff down, it moves into that and creates a shelf. Just like uh, making a retaining bed for a garden. Sleep. And having a flat spot is what this is all about. So that's why I kicked it back a little bit. So it's more of a leaned back teepee. And uh, it's long enough for me to sleep in this way. So this will be kind of like a lean-to, lean-to, and then an open face that we can shut down. And right now we're just laying material in the front here so that we can scoot some of this dirt and leaves down and make a flat spot. I'm just using all the little snags on the top here to hook them together and just get stronger and stronger. And the inside, this is going to be pretty good size. I'm hating these sticking out. If I don't want to get hurt. We're going to haul in some big straights now and build the rest of the main uprights of this. I just turned some manzanitas upside down because they were there to get that basic first shape. Start weaving them in here because we don't have straights because we're working with all crooked material. We're just going to start weaving them in here sideways. There's no shame in that. People get uh, stuck on making big stuff, heavy stuff, all that. You can just use what's at hand and you're trying to go as quick as you can. So, you can also be making some of this into kindling, whatever, and just kind of resourcing out what's closest. I'm doing this Roman style and just making a road to where my resources are and using that material as I go. There is one wall roughed out and then you get on the inside and you weave it together but you can start to see that you have a shelter coming together. Come with me. I'll show you what I'm doing here. See all these dead ones? They either got burned by the fire or died off because the canopy got too big for them. And we are grabbing them up high and bending them down to wherever they, they snap. And we're being careful not to fall on that. We're not going to kick it like I just did and hurt ourselves. And just dragging that up here. And just locking it up with a pair of horns. And then it just gives us more and more things to tangle into. On the inside, how much room we got? I can lay down. Hold it. I want more. So, not bad.
So I sit down for a little while because I'm breaking my rule of not breaking a heavy sweat, but we've also cleared out all the dead material around us, except for little stuff, all these little twigs and leaves we can actually heap on here now. This is what it looks like from the back side. And yeah, the inside. Like I say now you get in here. Yeah, I like to throw more stuff on the outside too. Anything that ran through will help us level the floors out. And then the rest of it will stick. Plus we can spend more time snapping and weaving all these little branches together. And bringing more little sideways ones in and sticking them in there. But not if you were just laying out here in the cold. Yeah, and already it's a smaller protected area. Seems very defendable to me. With a sharp stick or a club. So, immediately when I know that I have my basic structure built, what I go to for is the next um, layer up, the next material that I'm going to use. Looking around in this area, it's kind of a pine forest. Luckily, we do have an invasive species, and all the little leaves on the scotch broom, and the fact that it's easily removable from the ground, and that it has a bunch of little leaves on it that can create cover when they're all put together can create a good uh, a watertight shelter for you or as watertight as we're going to be able to get so. you can see I've gathered up a good little arm load, that's just one little piece. We gotta shingle it from the bottom to the top. But, kinda exhausted the big supply here, so we're just gonna move to the next easiest, closest supply. So I see some up on the ridge here. We'll go grab that. So, we're just gonna start spreading this material. Literally pretty low tech. Just Right around the base, and this is going to add in the final weaving that will allow us to sprinkle things like leaves on it and just keep making our complete debris shelter. And of course, as we go along, once we get the bottom piece on, we're going to be putting the next pieces on top of that so that. As things are hitting it, it's shingling down and down and down, and that starts to make a difference. So, on with it. You see there's some flat sheets of this, and every little bit helps. You might do a load where you're changing up what you're gathering. Don't be too much of a perfectionist about it, just add it in. It'll be the same thing, just start at the bottom and shingle your way up. Actually, we'll put this right there. It does make good bottoms. Just keep stacking. The idea is we're going to get this as covered as we can.
Okay, as we start to get the sides all shingled up with that next layer of thatching, we can actually start to use the debris part of this. And just literally fit together anything we got. We're lucky to have some broad leaves here that survived the winter. And uh, every little flat surface of that is going to help and not just adds to a little rain protection, layer for layer, and if you had more time, every time that you had energy to spend, you could just keep building it onto that skeleton. So, it's not sealed up perfect, but it sure looks homely in this evening light here. You can see I still have to cover up the front if I wanted, but that's got some layers onto it now. And you can start to feel the coziness of it. A little bit of the safety of the whole thing. And now we get in here and I would push all these little branches up and weave it better and do some inside housekeeping. I'm really enjoying it. better than nothing for sure and I wouldn't stop now if it was my first night I would just be probably taking my outer shirt off using it as a tarp and I'd just layer this puppy up maybe make a big, big branch to cover the entrance where you guys are but I hope you can see how spacious that is it's kind of nice with the evening light coming in here it's definitely dropping in temperature I had to put on my layers. Okay. <laughs> I know it's kind of big, but I'm kind of big too. And gives your mind something to focus in on. If you were in this situation, and for right now, it's a good practice, so I hope you all enjoyed. Um, the idea is just to get the creative juices flowing and and uh, everybody, think outside, think outdoors, because you're definitely, there's nothing wrong with being, you know, by yourself in nature right now or ever. And hopefully no one will ever try and take that from you. And uh, yeah, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, try and stay safe. Survive, no matter what. And this was our first rudimentary episode in this series will start with shelter which is definitely one of the elements of survival
Hey, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the subscribe button below. It helps the quest for details grow. I appreciate the support. And if you double click the bell icon next to it, you'll get a notification each time we put out a new video.